Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Je suis Paul Clark, and bienvenue dans mon studio. Now, what have I got for you lovely people today? Well, we're going to be painting this beautiful little chateau that we came across on our recent painting holiday on the River Rhone in France. But before we start, I've just got a short little film of our adventures that we had on our trip. So please come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. So welcome aboard the Emma Cello, where we had painting and drawing lessons on deck, with stunning views for inspiration every time you looked up. With step-by-step -step instructions on board, now that sure is a different view from the classroom at home. Yeah. Now around every bend of the river there was a pretty little town or village. Now this excursion took us to the place that this week's tutorial is based on. And then on to the tiny medieval village of Brancion for a little step back in time. Bonjour madame. Jolly robe. Hang on, that knight is using an iPhone 10. And then we managed to find some beautiful dappled light on this row of old stone houses. Our next excursion took us to the pretty town of Cluny with its 10th century abbey. But by gosh, it was hot. But we found a cool spot under a giant tree to sketch and paint. Wet wash drying time, about three seconds. And then onward for a night voyage into Lyon where the Seine meets the River Rhone. And of course you can't visit this part of Bordeaux and Provence without visiting a vineyard, just to make sure the wine tastes as good as it does on the ship. Ah, Provence. And the scenery changes again. Now this is Van Gogh country and we visited the asylum at Saint Remy where he spent some of his last years and for me where he painted some of his best work. Now for part two of our trip I'm going to do another video in one of my inspiration series and cover our visit here and to the town of Arles where I must admit to getting totally engrossed in the story of one of the greatest artists of all time. So did we have a good time? Yeah. I think we did. And as for the karaoke backing vocalists, the timing was impeccable. Sort of. Shall we get on with some painting? Okay, so for today's materials, my paper is some Langton Prestige. It's 100% cotton, 140 pound. It's on a block, so it won't need stretching. But any decent watercolor paper will do. And it doesn't even have to be cotton. And for my colors, I have cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and a little touch of cadmium red, sap green, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, and dioxidine purple, and some white gouache, and just three brushes for my range, a three quarter inch flat, number 12 and number six round. So here is the photo that Margot took that this tutorial is based on. Although I have simplified the chateau a little and added in the little lavender field. So a quick pencil sketch and as ever, the drawing template is available to download from my website, free of charge, link in the description below. Off we go. 
using a flat brush and clean water just pre-wetting the sky area straight over the top of the roofs of the chateau and then dropping in a graduated wash of cobalt blue and cerulean blue nice and light at the bottom then for these distant hills just a watery mix of cobalt blue now blue will always give the impression of things that are in the distance now while it's drying I'm coming down to the opposite corner and wetting the path and dropping in a little watery burnt sienna with just a touch of cadmium red and here some burnt umber and just a little splatting into the wet with some burnt umber again now for the chateau a watery mix of yellow ochre and I'm using my number 12 brush then I'm drying my brush and lifting out a few highlights as the direction of the light is coming from the top left I'm also using a tissue here to lift out some stone texture. Now again, all my greens today are being mixed from a combination of cadmium yellow and cobalt blue, but I'm adding in more or less blue into the mix to vary the color. And this is a real opportunity to practice mixing your greens. And as I always suggest, try them out on a scrap of paper first. Just let those colors mix and blend on the paper. And here I'm just dropping in a touch of burnt sienna. Next, with the sharpened wooden end of my brush, I'm scratching in a few grass details, but just here in the foreground. And of course, a little random splatting. Next, using my number six brush for the roofs, and this is a mix of burnt umber with a touch of cobalt blue to darken it a little. Now what I'm doing on all the pointy roofs is lifting out with a damp brush on the left side and then loading more pigment to the right shadow side. Here I'm just leaving the middle tower of the roof unpainted but continuing with the roofs on either side. And this is quite a strong milky mix. So now these have dried, I can finish the middle one and painting in exactly the same way. Now this is a little rocky area here and I'm also adding some shadow texture into the wall. Now for the trees, and this again is a mix of cadmium yellow and cobalt blue, but I'm adding in a little touch of sap green to brighten it a little. Then dropping in some darker bluey greens 
all done of course wet in wet. Now just to add a little interest, I'm dropping in here a little touch of dioxidine purple. And all the other trees in the painting are done in exactly the same way, varying the mixes and getting darker values towards the bottom. Now the important thing to remember as always is not to fiddle too much and just let the paint do its thing. Of course, a few dark green splats, some going into the dry, some going into the wet. And just dab out with the tissue a few unwanted dots. Now for the lavender fields, and this is some dioxidine purple. Now I'm using my number 12 brush on its point and making sure the brush strokes taper away into the distance. Just simple quick blobby strokes. Now filling in the gaps with a yellowy green. Then dropping in a darker green on the underside above each row of lavender. Using my number six here and getting in some real darks to create some contrast. Now for some dark green for these lovely long morning shadows. And across the lavender field, just painting in the shadow in the green area. Now I have a full tutorial on painting the lavender field, link above if you're interested. So now where the shadows cross the lavender, I'm putting in a darker value purple. And then a few more further details. Now for the tree trunks and this is a 50-50 mix of burnt umber and cobalt blue and I'm using my number six brush. Okay, so a short general pep talk on the way our painting evolves. Now while of course it's important that we plan our stages of our painting, remembering that we always need to work from light to dark, it's also important that we're flexible and don't conform to rigid stages, but be willing to be spontaneous when the need arises. Now watercolour being such a versatile medium means there is never only one way of doing something. 
Now I could easily paint the scene again and find that I'd paint many of the stages in a completely different order, but still come out with a similar result. Now I'm sure another artist would paint this scene in an entirely different order. Sometimes you just need to go with your instincts and see where it takes you. Never be told there's a wrong or right way to paint anything. It's all about adding your own personality. So here, just a few grassy details. So now we need to let this totally dry and it's a perfect time for a short break and a swig of the local Blonde de Donjon. And a big thank you to Manon, who gave me this beer on board. Oh, that's good. So I'm just filling in this bit of rock with some yellow ochre. And now for the shadow side of the roofs. And what I'm doing is simply softening the edges of, with clean water to create a soft natural blend. Okay, now to create the illusion of these round towers. So I'm re-wetting with clean water then dropping in some burnt umber on the right side and letting the bl colour blend across. And the same thing here. And now back with that dark mix for these final details.
and just a few more little touches with some dark green. And now to finish off with some white gouache or acrylic for those lovely highlights and sparkles of light. Here I'm just adding in a little dark green purple into the gouache for some lighter lavender details. And there we go, all done. To Fini. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. And it just gives you a little flavor of the beautiful countryside of France. And don't forget to hang about for the next video for part two, where we go all Van Gogh. So as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, it is free leave a comment. I do read everyone and I look forward to seeing you all again next time for another Watercolour Wednesday. So, a bientôt. Bye for now.